Hi, welcome into my studio. Before I get on with the demonstration of this uh, remarkable chimpanzee face, I want to talk about tonal value. And the reason I want to bring it up is because when I'm doing my critiques or when I'm looking online at um, beginners and novice artists, the one thing that they generally uh, get wrong, it's the most important thing, it's the tonal value. So what is tonal value and why have I picked this subject to start with? Well, tonal value is the range from um, light to dark. And as you can see on this photo, there's a full range there of um, very light on the top of the forehead to very dark with those creases under the eyes. And here's a tonal value scale. So on the left, we've got pure white. On the right, pure black. And all those ranges, which could be any amount of uh, number of ranges and subtleties, in between so that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying about the tonal range from light to dark now not every subject is going to go all the way and have the purest white to the purest black in there let's think of a subject perhaps a wolf in um, a, a morning or a late evening scene everything is subdued so everything would probably be in that middle range and that's fine but most times when we're doing uh, animal portraits or dog portraits or cat portraits, we usually want a wide range of tonal values because that makes for a much punchier image. Let me show you an example. Here's a photo of a crowned crane that I took. Looks pretty good. We've got lots of lights, we've got lots of darks in there. Um, looks like a good photo to work from, but actually it's not. Let me show you why. Now that's the photo with the full range, full tonal range. The blacks are really black, the whites are really white. So we've got that full range in there. Let's look at them side by side. Now you can clearly see how we've got a lot of tonal range and contrast on the left and very little on the right. So the right one, the one on the right is missing all those deep blacks, all that contrast, all those punchy whites. And this is what I'm generally seeing when people send me in uh, artwork to critique. They're lacking all that. Now, make sure when you print out your reference photos, if you're not working from a screen, you're using decent quality paper. That's the big deal. If your printout is coming out like the one on the right hand side, chances are when you do your artwork, it's going to turn out like that as well, because it's just too much for your brain to um, compute on making things lighter, making things darker, making them punchy. So tip one, get that reference photo printed out. Decent paper, glossy paper will normally give a punchier um, printout and then you're off to at least a, a good start. Now I was going to talk about image editing and things but I've already done videos on that to prepare your photograph uh, ready for painting such as this and there's lots and lots of videos, excellent videos on YouTube freely showing how to uh, make sure your levels and your contrast is correct in your photograph. So I'll leave that um, as it is. Now, I've, I put a photo up on the screen of the stages I'm going to work in. That's the reference photo on the left hand side, the finished drawing, pastel drawing on the bottom. And if you're watching this from Patreon, I'm going to supply this uh, sheet in links for you as well. So you can zoom right in and see exactly what I'm going to be doing. But basically, I'm looking at this project really for the tonal aspects. And you can see now I've talked a bit about tone, why I've picked this chimpanzee is really punchy. So number one at the top, that's going to be my tonal underdrawing. I'm just going to do it with uh, a black pencil, a black uh, pastel pencil, and a little, little bit of white as well. And I'm going to just concentrate on just working out where the darkest darks are going to be, the lightest lights. I'm going to use a light touch. Number two, I'm going to show you a glazing technique. I'm going to use my pencil really um, lightly on its side just to glaze that flesh tone over the top. Number three, once I've done that underdrawing and that glazing, that's when I'm going to start detailing. I'm going to work the details on top and because I've done that earlier work, it's going to go a lot easier than it normally would. The final image down the bottom, as I mentioned, that's the finished drawing. So let's take a look and let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting off pastel matte paper, image is transferred down onto it. I've just taped it to my board as my reference image by the side. I've just taken that section from the face and all I've got 
a black Carbothello pastel pencil, nothing else. I'm keeping the supplies um, quite limited in this one. I'm not going and telling you all the different pencil numbers and all that. You know, you guys know me by now probably, and I really don't like doing that, and I don't like teaching that way. I do mention it in some of my videos that if if you want uh, just one video, one lesson to get you going, so so you can just buy a couple of pencils, the limited supply, and create something just to see if you like pastels or not. I've got a, a tiger demonstration. Tiger for complete beginners and it really is for complete beginners. Um, that's, that's available to purchase either as a download or, or it's already on this Patreon channel. So that'd be a starting one. Now this subject looks really complicated. I'm telling you that a beginner or a novice can do this. Just take your time. Just follow along with what I'm doing you're going to surprise yourself, amaze yourself and your family at what you'll be able to create, I'm really sure. Um, watch the video all the way through a couple of times. I'd advise just to get, uh, you probably already got pastels if you're, if you're into pastels already and probably got enough supplies, but the ones I usually use pencil wise are Carbothello and Pitt pastel pencils. And in all honesty, you can't get enough of them. You always want lots and lots of different colors. The cheapest way is to buy them in the sets and both those brands are really reasonably priced. So if you are interested in pastels and just starting out, I'd personally just get a set of pit pencils and a set of Carbothellos to start with and then you can do um, little subjects such as this. When you become more experienced with pastels and you're starting to work larger, then you're going to want to get some um, other supplies and I've got videos on other supplies just so you're saving your pencils so you're not using pencils all the time for the underdrawing. So with that out of the way let's talk about what I'm doing now and basically I'm looking at the tones, the tonal value. I don't care about the colour at all. Tonal value is the most important. You saw that little intro that I put on there. If your tones, your lights and your darks are not correct, if everything is not dark enough and other things are not light enough you get that washed out appearance that's why I'm using this black pencil I'm not pushing hard I'm going really lightly with it you can see it just very lightly I'm squinting my eyes I'm looking at the reference I've got that reference really close that's important as well and I'm looking at where the darkest parts are and I'm shading those in critical things like around the eyes you want to get the shape right so I'm drawing that in first I'm not pushing too hard these pastel pencils they come out nice and black without pushing hard I don't want to fill the tooth of the paper up so I'm just getting everything in position and then I'm just using my pencil on the side as you saw to shade in the dark areas the colors are going to come later in this piece let's concentrate on getting the most important element right first the lights and the darks. People seem to get really obsessed with the colours and think of it like this. If this chimpanzee was in a different coloured part of wherever he is, there'd be other light bouncing around that would be acting on him. So he'd look at slightly different colour. So if we add a simple idea if we had a, a sunset he'd have lots of warm colors on him if he was uh, on a cold day with an overcast sky there'd be lots of cool colors on him he wouldn't always have that fleshy colored face he wouldn't have you know the light on top of the forehead all these things would change but to give him shape and form we need to get the tones right the lights and the darks right that's what's making him look three-dimensional that's what's giving him the form under the skin of the bones and that's creating lights and shadows on top of it the color is nowhere near as important I keep saying it it's got to sink in eventually because it's the truth without a doubt the light and the dark is the most important and that's the main reason the only reason I'm doing this video so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna speed it up a little bit you're going to see me just shade in all these darks.
Okay, so that's pretty simple so far. I've got the tones in on the one eye. And you can see I've not gone to extreme darks yet. No need for that. That's going to come later. I'm just putting in and shading in where the main darker elements are going to be, the shadows and the darker elements. Now, you can see why I've used that pastel matte grey paper. It's acting as my mid-tone. When I start putting a few highlights on, you're going to really see the benefit of it. Don't go working on white paper. It's really, really difficult when compared to starting on toned paper. Now, I could have used a pastel matte brown. I could have used the sienna. I chose the grey because it's more neutral. I really wanted to show the tone in this. I didn't want to confuse anything with colours. It's very limited colours in this piece. So I'm carrying on and just blocking in, lightly shading in those darks. Now I've got those darks in place, I'm just going to put in a few lighter tones. I haven't gone with a white pencil, this is uh, really a very, very light grey. And you can see, really lightly I'm using the pencil on this side, I'm not pushing into it at all. I'm just indicating where the main highlights are going to be. It's going to help me when I start to put the colours on. Now another mistake lots of beginners and novices make, they don't blend these underlayers into the paper. They leave them standing and sitting on top. I want to retain as much of the tooth for this paper as I can, so I can put as many layers on top as I can. With the layers come detail. So I'm using a stump. It's basically um, paper that's round, wound up uh, tightly. You get softer ones and harder ones. This is a harder one. And they're really, really inexpensive to buy. So get yourself a load of them. The harder ones, when you don't want to move the pastel around and blend it out too much, that's when they come into their own. The softer ones, when you really want to blend it in, that's when they come into their own. Here I'm using the harder one. So that's a paper stamp. The softer ones are made with rice paper. And you can see it's blending it all together. It's pushing it into the surface. When people say to me, I've run out the two for the paper, I can't get my pencils to sit on top of whatever they put underneath, it's mainly because either they've put down too much pastel as an underlayer or they haven't blended it in in the first place like this and I'm just pushing it into that surface. I'm not using a lot of force and it's something you'll learn with experience but you can't go too far wrong with it, it's just blending it in. 
Hope you've enjoyed this overview of the tonal process. I've kept it really simple, but it's also very important to get it right. As I mentioned, this is the most important part of the drawing. Getting the colors next, and then the details on top. The details are just the icing on the cake, and they're really easy to do. This is where the work needs to be done, and it's not something you want to skip. So I hope you've enjoyed this. As I mentioned, on my Patreon channel is a 1 hour 20 version where I go into real detail on the chimpanzee face, showing glazing of colors, uh, building up layers of detail and texture as well on there, and really achieving quite a, a lot of realism. Lots and lots of members on there. I think we've got 1,100 plus well. members, and you get access to... Um, loads and loads of videos when you join it's not just one you get the back catalog of two years as well so hope to see you over there soon